So in the previous video, we looked at the great detail associated with making sure that you get this message from the nervous system in the form of a neural action potential into and within the muscle cell, the myofibril. It takes a lot of stuff to get to that. Now that we've gotten to that, let's see what the result of that neural message entering and propagating within the muscle fiber is. So we'll entitle this next flowchart a continuation of the sliding filament model. So this is sliding filament model, and this is Roman numeral 2. And so here, let's look at what has happened. Let's remember that we are going to utilize both the thin and thick filament in this sliding filament model. That's why it's called a sliding filament model. So what happens at these two structures um, that's of interest to us? So we have the sliding filament, we have the thin filament, and the thick filament. If you remember, the thin filament is the actin filament. What's its job going to be during this sliding and contraction process? It will be as follows. What we're going to notice is that that calcium, remember we released it from the SR as a result of the action potential propagating within the myofibril, that's going to cause a very important event at the thin filament. The released calcium, Ca2+, those ions that are released from the SR, those ions actually bind to a regulatory protein found within the thin filament, and that is troponin. Bind to troponin or the troponin complex, same thing. So once you have calcium bind to troponin, this causes a morphological change to troponin, which is a protein. So this regulatory protein can change when it's bound to calcium, and it does. How so? Troponin, in response to this binding, is going to change shape. It's morph. Changes shape. What does this cause? This shape change subsequently causes a very important prerequisite to any sort of contraction, and that is the following. When troponin changes its shape, this will subsequently and simultaneously move tropomyosin. Remember what tropomyosin did on the thin filament? Both of these, troponin and tropomyosin, are regulatory proteins. This is regulating, troponin regulates tropomyosin. Tropomyosin regulates a certain part of the actin thin filament. This moves tropomyosin away from that structure it was blocking, away from what was known as the myosin binding site. Now the myosin binding site is free, it's open, it can be attached to. What do you think is going to attach to the myosin binding site? Of course, when the myosin binding site no longer has a blocking tropomyosin because tropomyosin moved it away, because calcium told tropo, bound to tropo, troponin and troponin was able to move tropomyosin, what is the MBS there for? What is its purpose? Well, its purpose is to associate with the thick myosin filament. What happens here? At the thick myosin filament, once you have this open MBS, you'll see the following. You're going to have myosin, which is the thick contractile protein um, with what is known as an ATP binding site. So ATP as a molecule can bind to myosin and also an actin binding site. So we'll call it an actin BS. So myosin with an actin ATP binding site and an actin binding site. At rest, it's very important to denote what happens before the contraction. At rest, we call and put the myosin head, which is, remember, just an extension of this myosin molecule. We state that at rest, the myosin head is in what is termed a low energy state. It doesn't want to do anything. It doesn't want to contract. That's why it's at rest. But what happens is, this is going to be due to the fact that the ATP, there's going to be an ATP molecule, the same old molecule you're familiar with, an ATP molecule at rest is bound to the specific ATP binding site that is found on myosin. That's why I said it here. Myosin with an ATP binding site at rest, ATP is certainly bound to its binding site. And if this is the case, this directly indicates, this tells you, it should tell you off the top, um, off the very beginning, that this uh, myosin, 
that's in question that you're looking at. If ATP is there on its binding site, this indicates that myosin is not, it's absolutely not bound to its actin binding site. So there's an actin binding site and myosin is not bound to it, okay? Myosin is not going to be bound to, I should say bound to actin, not the actin binding site. Myosin is not bound to actin because ATP is there. Why is ATP there? Because myosin is at rest and at a low energy state. Now, you might be wondering, I thought ATP meant energy. I thought uh, that would mean that myosin is obviously in a high energy state. That's not the case. ATP as a regular old ATP molecule does not possess energy. ATP only possesses energy when you chemically alter it. What we'll do in the next continuation of this video is show and highlight the alteration that happens to ATP that sort of kickstarts this entire sliding filament contraction process now that we have a good background understanding of what the thin and thick filaments are up to prior to contraction.